Welcome back brush monkeys. This week we are continuing the paint on camera challenge <laughs> um, that I started a couple weeks ago and last week as you'll recall we did this guy here Darius the wizard from Reaper Bones and we painted him in the traditional manner of base coat shade wash and highlight and he looked pretty good he came out pretty nice pretty happy with him I'm gonna put him off to the side though today we've got Darius <laughs> that we're gonna paint in the contrast method I wanted to do the same figure in both methods to better illustrate the similarities and differences between the two now last year or last week's video was kind of lengthy it's a little over an hour long for everything this video I'm anticipating being quite a bit shorter for two reasons one some of the stuff I'm not going to need to go over because um, it's going to be done similar to last week. Um, the um, things like doing the lettering on the book, for example, is going to be done the same way with the micron pens as last week. The basing is going to be similar. I'm using Dark Angels Green contrast paint instead of the uh, Vallejo Black Green, but it's still getting the Niblet Green dry brush. It's still got the Vallejo black green for the base band. I'm not going to need to show you all that on camera. Um, and uh, the other reason it's going to go fast is because uh, contrast paints are kind of a three in one process where the traditional method involved putting on a base coat and then we'd put down the shade wash, let the shade wash dry, and then we'd highlight it. The contrast paints are advertised as being base coat, shade wash, and highlight all in one thing. And to a certain degree, that's true, and we'll get into that a little bit as we go along. Um, so I want to go over some of the paints that we're going to be using for this. For one, I've got both the... These are the base colors that are sold as part of the contrast system. you got Gray Seer and Wraithbone. And the Gray Seer is kind of a cool gray color. It's good for if you expect a cooler color or cooler base to your colors. This will give it a kind of a cooler tone. The uh, Wraith Bone is good for things like skin and leather and things like that. If you look at, at our guy here, you see I've already done his skin, uh, his hand here. The cover of the book and the pages of the book are all already done in Wraith Bone because I want that kind of warm base to it before I start doing the other colors around it. I've got Gullum and Flesh for his skin. I've got the same um, Vallejo model color ivory and game color black for his eyes. For his inner robes, I'm going with um, Talisar blue. It's a nice, bright, vibrant blue. For his outer robes, I'm going with Ultramarine blue. Basically, the same color I did the other guy in. And then for his outer, his cloak, since I did his cloak in, <coughs> excuse me, since I did his cloak in a darker blue. I'm going to do this one's cloak in a darker blue. This is Leviathan blue. It's a really nice, almost black blue. Um, for his beard and hair, I'm using Apothecary White, but I have a Matt, the Army Painter Matt White as the base for that. So if the um, Gulliman flesh goes over a little bit around the face, I can touch it up with this before I go back in and, and do the Apothecary White. This is one of those colors that I've really kind of struggled with getting it to look right over the two bases because it, it doesn't quite look like white over either one of them. I've since been told it has to go over a white base, which is one of the big reasons why I primed both these guys in white, is make this work right. Um, in addition to that, I've got Skeleton Horde, which is kind of uh, sort of like the Seraphim Sepia wash that's going to be done on the pages here. And then I've got Snakebite Leather for the cover of the book. And then, like I said, the Dark Angels Green for the for the base here. Now, the reason I have the two base paints out is because, like I said, I did the uh, book and the skin in Wraithbone already. But if, like, some of the skin goes a little bit over onto the book, I've got to touch it back up with the Wraithbone. Um, the, the thing about the contrast paints is they're fairly thin and will show whatever's underneath them really easily. That's why if the skin tone goes over on the face, I gotta touch it up with the white. If the skin tone goes over on the book, I gotta touch it up with the wraith bone before I do the the leather on it, because otherwise it's gonna show that little bit of 
skin tone through the leather color. All right. So that's that. So let's go ahead and um, oh, the other thing to know about the contrast paints is you really don't want to use these on a wet palette. So we're going to be making very minimal use of the wet palette during this. And we're going to be using our dry palettes almost exclusively. So I'm just going to take a drop or two of your Gulliman flesh here. And let me get my, get my magnifiers on because even though I'm looking at this through the through the camera, I still kind of want to be able to see what I'm doing over it. All right. <laughs> this is the part that always strikes me as tricky when doing these paint on camera things. Get a little more on there. Now first and foremost, you can see how thick I'm putting this on. It's because it kind of has to be. It, it's sort of sort of a wash that goes on over everything. Over. Like I said, it's base coat, shade wash, and highlight all in one. This will go on fairly thick, but then this will begin to kind of seep into the crevices. And as it dries, it will pull away from the high points and will make that look like it's highlighted. Alright, so there you go. Just like that, the skin's already done. Now, the other thing about these contrast paints is um, because they're sort of wash-like consistency, they take a long time to dry. So I will generally do things like, like right now I'm going to paint this sash and his inner robes because they're not coming in contact with any of the other colors. And uh, as long as I'm waiting for one to dry, I might as well wait for two of them to dry and be able to get that much more done that fast, that much faster. And this will enable me to show off probably a little better than the skin does how the built-in shade and highlight thing works with a color like Talisar Blue. You can see how bright and vibrant that is. But you can also see how it's flowing into the crevices already and looking darker in the shadows and lighter in the highlights. Right, bear with me a second here. There we go. Here we go. There we go. All right. Now you do kind of have to watch this as it's drying because sometimes if it's put on too thin, it'll start to pull away from places where you really kind of need it to be. And you might have to do two coats of it. But for the most part, Right there, you can see how that built-in shade wash has worked out on those robes. And that looks really nice. Now I can go back in before I do the... The, the ultramarine blue is a, is a little darker than this, so I don't really need to clean this up, but I can if I want to. I can go in with the, the um, grace here. Or the white, touch it up. 
and siphon a little bit of this away from his wrist here. Here we go. You can. Yeah, it won't focus on his hand because it's focusing on mine. Nice. So yeah, you can kind of see how that's. But you can see how I kind of slopped over there. I'm going to need to touch all that up with the wraith bone when it dries. And then when I put the uh, snake bite leather on there, it's going to look like a really nice dark brown leather color. That's looking pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and let those two dry for now. And then uh, when we come back, we'll do his uh, outer robe. And go from there. Alright. See you soon. Alright, brush monkeys, now that those first two contrast paints are dry, you can kind of see the effect I was talking about where it kind of flows into the little crevices and self highlights and all that fun stuff. And that's exactly what we were expecting from that. So now I'm going to go ahead and paint the outer robes. And again, for that, I'm using the uh, Ultramarine Blue contrast paint. And this is, there's not going to be any big surprises here. This is going to be just like the last video. You know, I put it in the dry palette, paint it on, you know, no big deal. So I'm going to go ahead and shut this off, do that, and then we'll come back and see how it looks. And then uh, we'll go on with the cloak, right? Well, I'll give you a little, little view of what it looks like. Yes. Okay. This is it's no big no big uh, surprises going on here but basically we just like that just like that and then we continue on all over the figure. And when we get to where we're painting on the inside here, just got to be a little bit careful. There we go. We don't want it to slop over onto the... If it gets onto the beard like it just did, that, that's fine. That's not a big deal. Because I'm going to touch up the beard and hair with the white before I do the apothecary white but that's really all that's involved we'll just continue that all the way around and then um, we'll come back and see how that looks okay all right see you soon all right so there's what the ultramarine blue looks like all over I also put the talisar blue on his hat band which I meant to do in the last step and uh, did his hat with the ultramarine blue I also painted, um, if you want to zoom in there a little bit, went ahead and painted his eyes. And I, I did his eyes the same way I did the eyes on the last video. I just uh, painted a little line of ivory on both eyeballs because they were pretty prominently sculpted. And then painted um, this little dot of black. It still looks kind of cartoony to me, but being as this guy is based on a cartoon character, it kind of kind of fits, I guess. It's not terrible, I guess. In certain lighting, it looks weird, but yeah, it looks alright. So there we go. There's the uh, ultramarine blue on there. Um, next up I'm going to paint the Leviathan blue on his cloak. Um, normally I'd wait for the ultramarine blue to dry but the Leviathan blue the parts that touch the Leviathan blue are pretty dry as it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Um, and then I'll let both both blues dry and then we'll come back and uh, get on the beard and the book and all that. And here again with the Leviathan blue, it's not 
not again any big any big secret or any big uh, tips or tricks involved in this just get some paint on your brush and brush it on the figure just like that and when you come up across the parts that touch the ultramarine blue I'm a little more careful with those so I don't slop it over now this right here where it's kind of beating up I would strongly recommend not touching your figures with your bare hands at all um, prior to painting them because that's kind of what happens every place it does that and I've had like three or four on this figure already is a place where skin walls have touched it so I just take one of these little makeup sponges brush it on that to rub it off and then reapply the paint and you'll see it rubs off that skin oil and you can go back to painting on the paint um, I tend to not watch out for this kind of thing because most paints aren't really that susceptible to it contrast paints on the other hand because they're much thinner are very susceptible to your skin oils messing them up so yeah wash your hands handle your fingers with gloves on that kind of thing because um, it'll it'll mess with your paint job bad <laughs> but really that's all there is to it so I'm gonna go ahead and finish painting this and then we'll um, take a break let those two contrast paints dry then we'll come back and touch up the hair and beard and do that next all right all right see you soon all right I'm back and his uh, cloak is looking all nice and dark blue and you can kind of see what I was talking about with the uh, highlights kind of coming up naturally in that and the uh, ultramarine blue um, there's a couple of spots that are still a little bit wet and uh, this is one of them right there <laughs> Because uh, so when when the contrast paint dries, it tends to pull away from the highest point. It contracts a little bit, and so it tends to leave little spots that look like they weren't painted. So painting with contrast paints involves a lot of painting large areas, and then you go back in and touch up little spots here and there, <laughs> and then you paint the next big area, and then you go in and touch up a bunch of little spots here and there. Um, but now that that's more or less done I'm gonna go through and <coughs> excuse me and touch up the um, white on his beard and hair um, to prepare it for the uh, apothecary white um, contrast paint and there again it's not gonna be any big secrets um, it's nothing we haven't done before in the other video or here it's just a couple little places around the face where the skin got under the the beard a couple of spots on the hat there where the uh, uh, contrast paint I used on the hat band kind of covered up the eyebrow um, there's a big blue spot right there on his beard you can see so we're just gonna go through and touch all that up and I'm just using the army painter matte white to do all that and then once all that is done then we can go back in and see if I could do this on camera we can go back in and uh, put the apothecary white over everything and it's gonna look really nice as spiff now you'll notice I don't need to do the entire white area I just need to go or a couple of these little areas have gotten another color on it so again we're using our thumbnail palette here trying to do this on camera and yet where I can see at the same time and the two are kind of mutually exclusive <laughs> I can either do it on camera or I can do it where I can see
in. You can see I've got just a little bit on the bottom, bottom edge here. For the most part, I try to be fairly careful and not get too sloppy with the contrast paint, but you know, sometimes stuff happens. So there we go. All right, that's that's looking a little better now. Looking a little neater. And while I got that going on, I'm going to take just a little bit of the wraith bone and go ahead and go around the book here. Oops, that is really thin. Hold on. Uh, bear with me just a second. My wraith bone turned out way way thinner than I meant it to be. Sometimes, depending on how much water you have in the pad of your wet palette, if you let a paint sit more in a day or two, it can get really, really thin. Which is what happened there. I actually did the, um, the wraith bone on his hands and face and book and all that uh, a couple days ago. And then... Tried to, tried to paint it back in today. Right. And here I'm not getting too picky about getting down in these little details because the book's going to be brown. His hand's kind of a pinkish brown. It's not going to be terribly different from what I'm going for. But, I do want it to... There we go. Alright, there we go. Let me get just one more little spot on the face here. For some reason there's a little spot on the face that looked blue. I wasn't sure why that was. Alright. There we go. Oh, he's looking at a crazy wizard face. <coughs> Alright. So let that dry for a minute. And the apothecary white. This is one of the faster ones I've seen to separate out of all the uh, contrast paints. You can see where there's kind of a clear line between this is the pigment, this is all the carrier. So that's why you hear that that in the background is my uh, vortex mixer. And the uh, noise you hear when that goes off is twofold. One, it's the uh, agitator inside the bottle moving the liquid around and uh, the other part of that is the the mixer itself is loud but essentially this is just kind of a apothecary white is less a contrast paint than it is just a and then it is a shade wash to white, really. Which is why it has to go on over white. A lot of these contrast paints, like if you have trouble painting blue, you can get a contrast paint and it paints the blue and now you've got it shade washed, highlighted, and everything all in one shot and it looks fantastic. Okay. With the Apothecary White, because it has to go over white, it doesn't really excuse you from learning how to paint white. <laughs> Like, it makes it a little easier to shade wash white. It's this nice, cool little shade wash. But it's not really a white contrast paint, if that makes sense. So I'm just going to paint that on there. And you can kind of see already, even though we've... Um, 
the traditional method yesterday, the guy's hair and beard came out quite a bit darker. We started with a darker base, started with a gray base. Now we're starting with white and we're painting a gray shade wash into it. So it's not going to, we don't need to highlight up to, up to white. So his beard and hair today are going to end up quite a bit lighter than they were with the Darius figure we painted last week. Let's go ahead and do all that. I'm having to attack this at some weird angles. I'll try to keep them on camera. <laughs> That's all it does. All right. So there's that. <clears throat> and as usual with the contrast paints, I'm going to go ahead and paint two of them on there at once so that we're not wasting time letting just one color dry. And uh, I'm doing the snake bite leather contrast on the back of the book cover now. Because we just touched that up with the wraith bone, and now we can get that leather color on there. leather color that is I'm just go real careful around the hand because obviously I don't want to slop it onto the hand at all same with the blue of the robe there for the most part if you just kind of touch it around the hand it'll sort of flow into where you want it to go anyway and you don't really need to doesn't really need a whole lot of guidance and babysitting. But there you go. To the edge of the book here. Okay. Now I'm going to need to, obviously because I'm kind of going over the edges of the pages in a couple of places, I'm going to need to touch this up again to, uh, before I do the pages, but we'll get to we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. There you go. It's nice, kind of mottled, another color. Texture paints are not really designed for large flat surfaces like that, but they will work. Um, they're really designed for places that have a lot of texture and a lot of um, uh, a lot of crevices to flow into and what have you so yeah there's that I'm gonna go ahead and let that dry I'm mop it up and we're landing on the belt there right. it kind of got off on the robes a little bit but okay so I'm gonna let that dry and then we'll come back and see how his beard and his book look before we finish up his book pages. Actually, uh, while I'm thinking about it, I may go ahead and do his base. So, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off and I'll do the base here too. And then when we come back, we'll uh, paint the uh, skeleton horde on the pages of the book and dry brush the base and do the base band and all that kind of stuff. None of that is any big surprise. It's the same thing we did in the last video. We're just doing it again here. So, um, like I said, this is going to be a really short video because some of the techniques are rehashing what we did in the last video. It's kind of the same either way. But some things are kind of unique to contrast paints. So, I'm going to take a break and then uh, we'll come back and see how it looks. All right, see you soon. All right, we're back, and I got the pages based with the uh, skeleton horde. The book's looking good. The base is looking good with the uh, dry, niblet green dry brush and all that. To do the book, um, for those of you that saw last week's video, 
this again is no big no, no big surprises it's just um, taking a micron pen and drawing a little illuminated letter doesn't have to be an actual letter and I like to draw a little border design like that okay and I usually do that with like blue or red or green some some border color like that and then the rest of the illuminated manuscript if I can get it to show up on camera here is just taking a brown micron pen and for the record I'm using like 0 0.005 microns for the writing and point yeah the same for the for the uh, illumination part of it so they're both both 0 0.005 and all you do is you just draw little squiggles. Kind of break them up every now and then so they look like words. Try to keep your lines fairly close together. It's something I kind of screwed up on the last one. Same thing on the other page. Micron pens are a little weird because they almost have to hit the page at a 90 degree angle, which is a little hard to do with some of these. Fortunately, since you're not actually writing anything legible, you don't need to worry about your penmanship <laughs> too terribly much on these kind of things. Darken up some of those lines there. And there you have it. Again, doesn't look like much up close, just looks like a bunch of squiggly lines, but from a tabletop point of view, that looks like a pretty good illuminated manuscript. Alright, so that's really all there is to it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and paint his base band with the Vallejo Black Green, and then matte seal them, and then this guy's pretty much done. I covered both of those in the last video, again, no big surprises, it's kind of done the same way with every, every miniature. So I'm going to pause here, paint the base band, go matte seal them, and then the next time you see this guy, he'll be completely done. Alright? See you soon. Bye. And there he is, Brush Monkeys, our Paint on Camera Challenge Part 2. Darius the Wizard, painted with the contrast paints. Looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and call them done. Painting on camera. So I, I hope over the course of this couple of videos, you see why I don't paint on camera very often. It's because it's really kind of difficult to paint with the camera in my way and still keep everything on camera so you can see what's going on. But uh, hopefully these two videos will be a an idea of what I'm doing when I'm not on camera <laughs> if you know what I mean and here is our traditional painted Darius from last week along with our contrast painted Darius from this week so you can kind of see the difference between the two so thanks for watching and uh, I hope you've learned a thing or two from these two videos and I will see you guys next week. See ya.
Hey boys, Monkeys Tom from Flying Monkey Studios here. If you like what you see, click like down below. Um, if you want to be notified when new videos come out, click subscribe. And uh, in the meantime, if you want to see how to add one of the miniatures that we've painted on this channel to your own collection, check out our Instagram, uh, Tumblr, and uh, Patreon sites. Uh, if you want to support, support us in doing what we do, check out my Patreon site, check out my uh, merch store at storefrontier.com slash flymonkeystudios. You can get t-shirts, sweatshirts, uh, long sleeve shirts, hoodies, all kinds of stuff there. Um, go check that out. And uh, in the meantime, thanks for watching, and I will see you next week. Bye.